What's going on guys and welcome back to another reddit video here on the Life Stories channel. My name's Dylan and today we're going to be looking at some stories from the subreddit Tales from the Squad Car. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Officer, go home you're drunk. It's a hot and sweaty day. As per usual, I'm walking a footbeat in an area known for drunk and stupid. Today was especially busy and had a large amount of both of the aftermentioned. As I walked, I noticed a large crowd about 50 feet in front of me, starting to spread like watching a pond ripple after you drop a stone in it. This generally means something is happening that I need to pay attention to. As I began to power walk over, a passerby pointed at the crowd and advised that I should help defuse the situation there. Baker 12 to Central. 12 go ahead. Start me additional units to the rich beggar reference disorderly crowd. It looks like a fight may kick off. 10 4 units in the area respond to the rich beggar. I hear two units sound off and begin to move towards me. In the meantime, I move into the crowd itself to see what's going on. I quickly size it up. It's a gentleman who was ejected from a bar and tried to force his way back in. Security took umbrage to this and forcefully removed him away from the bar. The crowd was various passers by, either encouraging violence, filming, or yelling for the hell of it. I quickly interposed myself between the bouncer and the drunk in question. The bouncer realised it was done and retreated back to his doorway. The drunk not as much, in fairness he wasn't nearly as sober. Yo you're done, leave right now and go home and sleep it off, we're finished here. Oh honey, we're far from done. My voice switched from a calm, low pitch to stern very quickly. No, you're not done, just go home. As I said this, he started to edge forward whilst looking around as if for a way to get to the bouncer again. I looked at our erstwhile drunk and drew in a deep breath. I'd already had a long day and I just wasn't in the mood for this rubbish. I'm usually a very happy, go lucky kind of guy. I try to smile my way out of most situations, as dumb as that sounds. When that doesn't work, I get annoyed and I've been described as slightly unpleasant. Did you not hear me? I said leave. Oblivious to my rapidly deteriorating patience, our drunk continued straight on his path to a very uncomfortable evening. Just as I began to contemplate the pros and cons of empty handed takedowns versus pepper spray, my backup arrived. Baker 22 to Central, myself and Adam 16 are out with 12. 10 4 all units. The drunk and his friend beat a hasty retreat as I went to brief my sergeant about what was happening. Baker 22, my jovial sergeant, gets a lowdown from me on the basics of the situation. I let him know that everything is under control and I just called for some additional people as a precaution. I'm pretty sure he noticed my eye twitching out of annoyance, but chose not to mention it. He quickly pointed out that Adam 16, his much less jovial counterpart, jogged off to catch the two gentlemen who tried to start the fight. I quickly made my way over to him and called out everything with dispatch. Baker 12 to Central, show Adam 16 and myself out with the two subjects, intersection of 3rd and Main. 12 go ahead. It looks like two white males, first subject white shirt, skinny blue jeans. Second subject Patriots jersey, gag reflex, red shorts, situation under control. 10 for 12. I finished walking up right as my grumpy counterpart impressed on both of them that they needed to disappear. We don't care what bar it is as long as you're welcome there and don't cause an issue, just go. Surprisingly, both drunks listened. They meandered off into the night as I started talking to Adam 16. So what happened? Evidently, Douche Canoe got kicked out for acting up. He decided to try and force his way back in and then that huge bouncer removed him. He got some air on him and he was pushed away. He was embarrassed, hence the attitude. Well, problem solved for now. Call if anything else pops up. Alright, stay safe. Baker 12 to Central, all units 10-8, no paper needed. I return to patrol, alternating between looking for drugs and watching drunks making fools out of themselves. Several hours later, I found some drugs, but gave warnings all round. I didn't really want to get stuck into paperwork over some college kid smoking a blunt in a deserted parking lot. Right as I'm about to pack in, I notice that our original drunken heroes are pinballing off walls and roaming down the street. I was bored so I meandered after them. They were easy to follow as they spoke in volumes much more appropriate for a helipad. 
Shortly after, the gentleman in the white shirt kicked over a city bench and pranced away as he giggled like a teenage girl at a Justin Bieber concert. I figured I might as well have a conversation with him at this point. Baker 12 to Central, Baker 12, show me initiating a pedestrian stop. 12 go ahead. We'll be in front of Starbucks by 2nd and Rhodes, same subjects as earlier. First subject, white male, white t-shirt, skinny blue jeans. Second, white male, Patriots jersey, gag reflex, red shorts. 10 for 12. As I walked up, I decided to play it safe and request some additional units to make their way to me. Douche Canoe was uncooperative before when I was solo, so he'd only be worse after many more hours of drinking. True to my expectations, he wasn't happy when he saw me coming. Right as he saw me, I called out, Hey man, come here real quick. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Now please. He slowly walked over, looking for all the world like a kid who just got caught by his mum stealing from the cookie jar. As he got closer, the smell of alcohol that he gave off nearly locked me onto my butt. So what did I do? I just watched you kick the bench over, man. Why are you acting up? That's why you stopped me from moving a bench? His friend started to walk over to our conversation. Hey man, do me a favour and wait over by that bench for me. I ordered. He skulked over that way. Do you have ID on you, brother? You don't have to give him rubbish. You can just walk away, his friend called from nearby. That's incorrect. He's detained at the moment. As we had this conversation, Adam 16 and a friend of mine, Adam 17, rolled up. 17 isn't a rookie, but he hasn't had the saltiness that the 15-year-old veteran like Adam 16 has. We also have a pretty close relationship. We initially bonded over a mutual love of boxing and MMA, and then went from there. He's been akin to a big brother who I look up to. He offers advice, looks out for me, and in general is highly protective, like someone watching out for his kid brother. He also has less patience for these guys. As my two co-workers arrived, the original gentleman's friend tried to approach us. Adam17 quickly took charge. Hey man, go and sit on that bench over there, we're talking to your friend. I'm good here. Sit on that bench until I say you can come here, he ordered. His tone implied serious consequences if he was ignored. Once he realised I wasn't going to die in a hail of gunfire or get beaten by two drunks with crowbars, Adam17 rode off into the night. This left Adam 16 and myself with our original drunk. I resumed our conversation. Alright man, do you have your ID? Nah man, I lost it when that fat guy threw me out of that bar. Okay, that's fine, I replied in my general soft voice I use when talking to some touchy people. We can work around that. Okay. Alright man, what's your name? Ryan Manson. Okay Ryan, what's your birthday and where do you have your license out of? South Carolina, the 4th, 20th, 6969. Thank you, sit tight for a second so we can check out your information. I did a quick warrant check on a secure channel and no record came back. This usually means one of two things. We either had a snafu in exchanging information, or he's purposely giving a false identity which indicates some kind of trouble. Alright Ryan, nothing came back, are you sure the information's correct? Yeah dude, I don't have no warrants. I never said you did. Can you spell your name and information for me again? Why man? Humour me and do it. Dude, our Uber's waiting right over there. Let us just go. You can go once I check your information. One trick when you suspect someone is lying is to have them constantly repeat and spell the information they give you. Bonus points if you switch the order up. If they're lying, they'll generally mess up and you can catch them in the lie. One try, two tries, three, then four. He gave the same information every time and nothing came back. Ryan and his buddy were getting annoyed, as were Adam16 and myself. Okay, are you positive this is right? Your license is out of South Carolina? Oh, my license is out of North Carolina. I moved there from recently. I thought you meant my plates. Why would... Never mind, just give me a minute to check this. Surprisingly, Ryan came back with no warrants. He wasn't a criminal, he was just stupid. All right, Ryan, I begin. You have no warrants or cap... I told you. Let me finish. You have no warrants or capias. We could cite you for disturbing the peace or arrest you for drunk in public. All of those would mean we'd have to spend more time together, something that none of us want. So do me a favour, hop in your Uber and go home. 
Adam, 16, and myself waited as Ryan gazed at us through glazed eyes. Finally, 16 broke the awkward silence. You know you're free to go, right? Oh, I know, that's why I'm standing here. I am an American, I'm free. I started to feel my eye twitch again, and I saw a large vein in Adam 16's forehead start to bulge. Usually a warning sign. Ryan, he started, get in your Uber and go. This is your only warning. Yeah, man, I backed the blue, he mumbled as he hopped into the back of his very patient Uber driver's car. Adam 16 and myself each deactivated our body cameras, looked at each other and released a collective sigh. He looked at me with this world-weary look he always gave me when I found ways to give him more work to do. I just shrugged in a, don't blame me, I work here kind of way. Blimmin' drunk idiots, he muttered as he walked to the back of his squad car. Third sentence, aforementioned, not after mentioned. I know guys, I've just got to read the story as the story's written. It bothered me more than I expected it to, to be honest. Right folks, the next story features a little bit of violence, so heads up. Highway Patrol, don't underestimate fat cops. I'm an officer with my country's National Highway Patrol. I was sitting at a store off the highway just inside the province I primarily work in. I was tagged into a job for a personal alarm activation suspected to be a rolling domestic. Another officer, former military, FTO of 20 years, approximately 160 centimeters tall and 90 kilograms, nearly if not past 50 years old, located the suspect's car just along the provincial border and attempted to stop him. He didn't immediately immediately stop, but pulled into a gas station and the driver exited the car and started walking. Per the FTO training, the FTO retrieved the suspect walking away and started getting him in a searching position over the hood of the suspect vehicle while the trainees started pulling the other occupants. The driver's being searched and turned around and grabs the main officer's gun from the holster. He headbutts the suspect in the face, punches him in the throat with his offhand, does a muzzle strike with the gun on his hand, elbows him, holsters his weapon and goes into the fight. This is where myself and another officer show up. I had my gun out, covering lethal, the other officer hopped into the fight. The suspect makes another attempt to grab the gun out of the primary officer. The backup officer tried to pull the suspect's legs out from under him, and the primary officer had him pinned to the car. Primary officer picked him up by a shirt, slammed him into the concrete, and mounted trying to get him onto his belly and into cuffs. The suspect was trying to pull the primary officer's head down into a headlock, and the primary officer grabbed the suspect's hair and headbutted him two to three times whilst bouncing his head with the hair off the concrete into unconsciousness. They ended up cuffing him and the primary officer held him in neon neck. We pulled the other two occupants out of the car, searched them, determined that there's one victim and the other occupant was a suspect. The non-violent suspect was charged with kidnapping and unlawful imprisonment. The violent suspect, however, was charged with both kidnapping and unlawful imprisonment and aggravated domestic violence, intent to kill, attempted murder, criminal battery on an LEO, criminal firearm use and inflicting serious injury. He was sent by an ambulance to the emergency department with multiple injuries deemed life-threatening. The victim was sent to the hospital on a psychiatric hold for a medical and psychological evaluation. The psychological evaluation slash hold because she was saying all sorts of stuff about demons wanting to kill her. The primary officer was taken to the emergency department for evaluation due to potential concussion and a bloody slash broken nose. Jeez, well, headbutts suck, to be honest, both to deliver and to receive. They're also a near surefire way to end a casual fight in a real damn hurry. I hope the officer was okay, but seriously, 99% of the time, people underestimate fat cops. Well, guys, that's it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy, leave a like rating down below, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.